Hey, hey, everybody. Yesterday, I saw The Master. Um, the new film, I believe it's his sixth film, from Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was certainly an experience. Um, I'm going to give it an eight because there's a lot going on and I you know I can't propose to tell you what this film means uh, I I'm not gonna tell you that I understood it um, it's very complex uh, it's it's a work of art you know it uh, it's abstract it uh, certainly will mean whatever you want it to mean. I mean, it, it, it evades... It evades classification. Um, it uh, eludes definition. Um, it, uh, it's working on many, many levels. Uh, I think that it's so odd uh, that I recently saw Cosmopolis and now I've seen The Master and they are both enigmas. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know what to think. You know, I'm, I'm going to see need to see this film a few more times. Um, but saying that I don't really have the drive uh, to see it a few more times um, it's you know sometime for me at least painful to watch uh, just in terms of torturous performances um, again I can't even begin to tell you what the film is about but the prevailing theme I find is failure um, failure to love failure to understand uh, failure to help um, failure uh, also, I mean, loss, uh, loneliness, uh, insanity, um, purpose, uh, you know, it's just great, big, grand life questions, uh, perhaps as you would expect. This is kind of been dubbed the Scientology film. Um, it's about a very troubled man uh, coming back from World War II. World War II has ended. Um, it takes place, I would say it starts in the mid-40s, 1940s, and probably ends sometime in the late 50s. Uh, it it hopscotch, uh, hop skips all over the uh, globe. Um, we're in California, we're in New York, we're in London. Uh, we're all over. We're in the uh, Pacific Theater. Um, so we have a troubled man who is uh, back from the war. He, through being a scoundrel, uh, stows away on a ship and that ship is run by a figure a philosopher um, a theoretical physicist uh, but of all above all a man uh, a curious one at that uh, and so begins their story together as the philosopher, um, Lewis Dodd, something, I can't remember his name, um, starts a movement. 
to try and help uh, everyone with the pain of everyday life. And again, I mean, it's about a lot, uh, but not a great deal happens. Um, the whole, you know, film, the plot is progressed uh, with subtle character changes, um, subtle life events. Um, you know, the film is two hours and 15 minutes, and it definitely feels, you know, like two hours and 15 minutes. There's a lot of talking. Uh, a lot of talking. Um, and again, it's all about changing the soul. Uh, do we change? Is it possible to change? Uh, and so it's kind of a meditation on that. And so it's not edge of your seat, nail biting, you know, thriller. The good thing, the great thing, is the acting. It, it's hypnotic, it's captivating. Um, you've got Joaquin Phoenix as the troubled man. Um, he's phenomenal here. He'll get a Best Actor nomination, uh, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, he He's in pain. At, at like all times and you see that in his eyes uh, you I mean even just to look at him you know that he is in pain and that uh, something is wrong with him you know something is wrong with him uh, and yeah and to, to pull that off to stay in that in that space uh, for such a long time I mean there's no way he can't get an Oscar nomination um, Philip Seymour Hoffman is the uh, philosopher, uh, theoretical physicist, writer, um, artist. Uh, he's also tremendous. When is Philip Seymour Hoffman not tremendous? Uh, he's tremendous here as well, uh, as always. Um, there's just, it's so dramatic, you know, it's and it it really if steers clear of melodrama i mean somehow it never really veers into that heavy melodrama though it's constantly constantly dramatic uh and you know to some people i'm sure you would call it traumatic uh in fact uh it's an absolutely gorgeous film that's another thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Paul Thomas Anderson used the same cinematographer uh, as he did uh, for There Will Be Blood and perhaps uh, his other films as well. Um, it just looked absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it, you know, just beautiful. Um so well acted this i you know found was kind of stylish stylishly different than uh paul thomas anderson's other films um you know you can definitely tell he's evolving uh he wrote and he directed this film as well as producing it um he is a uh, singular artist um i think he's one of our more important filmmakers working today uh, he's uncompromising, um, he takes his time, and he doesn't play to the audience. You know, he makes the film that he wants to make, and if that's a challenge to you as a viewer, as a person, then that's fine. Uh, perhaps that's, you know, his point, is to challenge you. Um, This film is, is primarily about, you know, two men and their relationship together. Uh, oh, I forgot to list the, list, list the rest of the cast. 
Um, we've also got Amy Adams. She's the wife of the philosopher, um, the master. Um, we've got Laura Dern. Uh, I didn't know Laura Dern was going to be in it. She's. It's great to see her. She's great. She doesn't have a huge part, but she's fantastic. Uh, who else is in there? I mean, it's a huge cast. It's kind of an epic story. Um, who else sticks out? Uh, there was a guy from There Will Be Blood, the fake brother of Plainview. Um, there's some more faces that I'm just suddenly forgetting. But, uh, you know, the film is just strange. Uh, I think, you know, again, it's all about failure. And I think that Joaquin Phoenix character symbolizes the failure of the master character, uh, the Philip Seymour Hoffman character. He keeps him close because he's not helping him. In a way, it's like this great unsolved riddle mystery that everyone else is taken in by his teachings, by his philosophy. Um, and it works on everybody. Uh, you know, it, it captivates. Um, except for him. He uh, he tries he goes through all the processes, but he he doesn't buy it. It doesn't it doesn't work. And he he loves the master. He wants it to work. He he wants to believe that it will work, but you know it doesn't. Uh, and I think that the full you know the master character wants to keep him around. Uh, one, perhaps not to expose uh, his failures, uh, perhaps that he can one day truly help him uh, to unlock his broken mind. And perhaps he's not broken at all. You know, he's just struggling with what he has done and lived through. Um, the movie's very weird. Uh, at, at times uh, you know I almost want to talk about the climax of the film but I, and I don't really think it would be a spoiler but you know the climax of the film is a song um, like literally uh, a, a song that is sung and you know, I definitely want to go back. You know, I want to look for clues. Uh, you know, something that that may help me crack this. Uh, because after one viewing, I mean, I'm definitely not there. I'm still thinking about it. Some of the photography, the gorgeous photography is stuck in my head. Uh, and... A lot of the powerhouse acting is stuck in there as well. So I will definitely enjoy revisiting it, but it's just something that it's going to take a lot. You know, it's, it's very um, dramatic and, and heavy. Um, but I, I, you know, I think it needs to be done. Um, in terms of Paul Thomas Anderson's <coughs> career, I mean, I'm a big fan. Again, I believe he's one of our most, most important filmmakers. For my taste, uh, I call Boogie Nights uh, the film of the 90s. Uh, it changed my life uh, when I saw it. And again, I, I think Boogie Nights is the, the great film of the 1990s. Uh, it, it's my number one for that decade. Um, I also think that There Will Be Blood is one of the great films from the last decade, the uh, the, the noughts. Um, 
I, I, in fact, I, I think I kind of love There Will Be Blood more than Boogie Nights. I think those are his two great films, and I think There Will Be Blood is also the great film, the great performance from Daniel Day-Lewis. So it's kind of like this artistic synergy and, and uh, you know, you know, something is happening. You know, every time I watch There Will Be Blood, I feel that something is just happening that's outside of this film. Uh, it, I want to watch There Will Be Blood again. Yeah, but again, so Paul Thomas Anderson for me has made two of the great films of my life and time. And then every other film he's made is really good. Uh, so he doesn't make, like, bad stuff. And this isn't a bad movie. By no means is it bad. It's just... You don't know what to think. You know, it's just weird. And it's individual. Um, it's uncompromising. It's difficult. And you just don't know what to think. Perhaps in 10 years, this will be looked back on as his great film. I don't think so, but, I mean, maybe. Uh, you know, see the film a few more times and, you know, maybe Heaven's Light will shine on me. And I will understand exactly what's going on. Uh, so, again, Paul Thomas Anderson doesn't make bad stuff, you know. It just doesn't happen. So it's not his best. Um, and, you know, you can't even say worst. Worst doesn't apply. He doesn't have a worst film. He has a less than great film. Uh, and, okay, I will call this less than great. Um, but it's still really good. And will get awards attention uh, when that season rolls around. If, you know just for the performances alone. Um, another thing I want to mention, not that it stands out near as much as There Will Be Blood, but the musical score is uh, by Johnny Greenwood uh, from Radiohead. Again, it's not near as, you know, I, still the music from there will, be blood, there will Be Blood sticks out in my head. And it's still kind of that same way, but it's much more uh, orchestral and fits in with the uh, the film so well where I thought the score for There Will Be Blood seemed chaotic and, and demanded attention, uh, much like Plainview. Um, so again, a good score from Johnny Greenwood, uh, though probably not as, you know, just like, whoa, what is that? Uh, but still really good. I don't know what else to say. I, I think... You know, I've already talked too long about something that I don't fully understand yet, um, or, or perhaps never will, but it's definitely something you should see. Uh, it's definitely something that will inspire conversation, argument, um, and it's, it's about, you know, helping others uh, while helping yourself. You know, trying to help yourself. Uh, but there's also, you know, again, and but that comes down to failing. Failing to do that. Failing to help others. Failing to help yourself. Uh, you know, this there's there's nothing light weight about this film. Um, so I, I don't know. I could probably sit here and ramble on much longer, but I will not. Uh, so that's the master it's it's really good it's it's definitely uh a highlight of the year uh but i'm i'm giving it a solid eight uh for now thank you very much